Well, by now you know what Peter Volandes has had to say in the Daily Telegraph. He hasn't missed with his view on the RLPA. Plenty of listeners have had their say this morning. And we thought it only fair that Clint Newton is given a right of reply. The boss of the Players Association is on the line. Clint Newton, good morning. Morning. Uh, there is a lot to get through here. We will do our best to um, to punch our way through a number of points. Uh, Peter Volandi says the RLPA is selfish, that you want, quote, confected conflict, unquote, and to have power. What is your response? Oh, look, I think that, again, I'm, I'm not going to get into a back and forth, back and forth, you know, the malicious attacks that have been pretty consistent over the last, you know, several months, if not, you know, the last 20 months of negotiations. But again, um, the NRL are developing a, a nasty habit of um, creating or trying to solve problems that don't exist um, to steal attention away from the truth. I mean, ultimately, that's not going to, the, the comments that are being made doesn't change the fact that the claims remain, you know, we want to go back to the table with an industrial relations mediator, you know, to get to solve it. I mean, again, people can say all they like from the other side, but it doesn't solve the issues. Okay, well, it's a bit of Peter Vlandi's style, and, and and like many fans, wants resolution. Perhaps he's come off the top turnbuckle. You're thinking maybe a little too heavily. There are some very direct. Well, it doesn't. Though, well, Vossi, it doesn't. Some... It doesn't. Um, whether it's too whether it's too heavy or not, it, it, that I like. It doesn't really bother me. Um, you know, okay. Struggling resistance has always been part of the part of the remit here when it comes to advocacy and representing your members, and that's. But what Clint, there's it. some very direct things he has accused the RLPA of being offered, and they rejected. Mm. Now, one is around international rugby league payments. The NRL wants standardised test match payments of five thousand dollars for all international competitors in a bid to better reward Samoa, PNG, Fiji, uh, Fiji Tonga players, of course. Volandi's confirmed he sent an email to the RLPA. He's put a date on it, June 9, accusing the Players Union of not wishing to pay the Pacific Islander players when they represent their country and being prejudiced against at least 48% of your RLPA membership. He said, I sent them an email to highlight what they are up to. Did you reject that offer, the $5,000, first of all, yes or no? That everyone gets paid well, we rejected. Same. We rejected... We rejected the NRL's proposal based on the fact that it doesn't align with where we want to take the international game. What we're saying is to strip out international rugby league from the current CBA, particularly in these tournaments that don't exist in CBA, show us and the nations the financials that are attached to government funding and the sponsorship and the revenue that is forecast for these tournaments and pay all the players equally. We're not against equal payments. We were the ones that have advocated that. What we're saying is the game needs to reset in the international space. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, to try and distract us from the issues at hand here, which is really about transparency on the financials that are attached to this space. The fact that the nations haven't even received the financial information that's connected to the international game, I would say is quite disturbing. You know, again, well, so, so, all we so want is, to do, do, is do you get think back when, when you're saying transparency issue. there, are you saying the NRL is not being transparent? Have, have the NRL lied then in presenting their case on this issue? Well, it's, I'm, I'm not going to call them liars, Vossi. That's not our style. You know, that, that may be the style of the other side. I think, again, that just is a distraction from the issues. The issues are the fact that there's no transparency in the international space. What we're wanting here is to open up the books, show us and the nations. What is forecast for these international international matches? Let's reset the model. That means that everyone can get paid equally, both women and men across all the Pacific and Australian players that tournaments that don't currently exist in the broadcast deal. Clint, uh, James Bangerson here. Uh, Peter Volandi says he's spoken to a number of players and they don't know what the issue is about. Not that they all need to, but what proportion of players do you think uh, have a full understanding of why they're on a media strike? Well, I think it's, again, it's a deliberate tactic to try and undermine, you know, the association and its members. I mean, ultimately, you know, Peter can claim whatever he likes, you know, who he speaks to. That, that's his right. Ultimately, we're going to be guided by the, the will and the conviction of our players. We've always done that. Um, we had, you know, over 50 players on a call when the when the action first was originally taken. We had another work through a process where we've engaged, you know, almost the same, if not more, player leaders when um, Peter proposed 
what they did last week. Um, that was um, the, the players effectively laugh that off because ultimately, again, it's dictating terms. What we're saying is if Peter wants to sideline his CEO, that's fine. Go and do it. You know, but again, you can't tell the players who's going to represent them. The players will decide who represents them in these cases. It's not just me. You're trying to sideline our whole legal team as well that are across all the detail and the information. So again, we're saying get to the table with an industrial relations mediator, which is a normal part of a dispute. Again, I don't see what's so outrageous about these claims. Uh, on um, on that, yesterday, and then we'll get yesterday you had a meeting with Sally McManus, the boss of the ACTU. Now, there's been some negative reaction to that with our uh, listeners this morning. What was the point of that meeting yesterday? Wouldn't have been better served meeting with the NRL? That that seems to be the response for, from from fans of the game. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready to meet. You know, under uh, under no, the meeting yesterday with Sally media. McManus. What was the point of the meeting with Sally McManus, the boss of the ACTU yesterday? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't just Sally McManus, um, bossy. It was about forty of the um, of the Australia's leaders that represent many sectors of the industries that exist in our country. I mean, you'd be crazy if you didn't actually accept um, the generous offer to come and meet with the ACTU and all their exec members. Uh, particularly when they go through the same battles as what we're going through. Again, they're like-minded people trying to secure claims that are not too dissimilar right. or exactly the same as so, so the benefits of yesterday, uh, of yesterday, you're saying tr truly beneficial, couldn't knock it back. So then how many proportion of players do you think actually understand why they're on a media strike? And will yesterday meeting with Sally McManus and crew, will that help the players at all? Well, what of course proportion will, of the players again, do you think? What proportion of players, like give me a number, you said 50 turned up a meeting, but there's over 500 players. What proportion yeah. do you think actually understand why they're on a media strike at the moment? Well, well again, Vossi, it's more about the fact that are our leaders across the information to help guide No, 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 what proportion? No, and clearly I'm just asking the question because include the NRLW players as well. I'm being, I'm under, I'm underselling there. It's way more than 500. We're talking yeah. more like 700 players. You say 50 players were on a call. Is everyone on well, that's the no media different strike? To, Do they Andrew, understand? That's no different to every other industry that goes through this mm. process. They rely on their leaders to understand the, the issues and move forward. That's the whole purpose of this. Again, you're taking away from the issues because you're trying to discredit our claims and you're trying to make, undermine the players. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, it's not going to get a deal done that. I'm just for the game. That's that's it. So I don't. I'm not either. Well, if you're for the game, players. Andrew, then I would suggest that you've got to you've got to actually present both sides at the moment. Ultimately, well, then you, what we're okay, trying to do right, here well, is get to the here's, table here's with me, the industrial relations mediator the game, and Clint. get on with it. That's all here's we're trying to do, Here's me representing Andrew. the game. I want to know. You obviously yeah. know because you've gone from media strike to chance of Dally M boycotted. Are we going to have a player strike? If we don't have resolution, yes or no, are we going to have a player strike? The, the clock is ticking. Well, I can't say yes or no, Andrew. The, the point is, again, everyone have leads spoken to the player about action. Pardon? Have you spoken about it? A player strike? The players speak about many different things. You know, ultimately, what we're saying here is that there is there's many steps along this road that we've got to take. Again, the players will determine what they're prepared to do. That's our job. We just present the options. We explain the risks. We explain how to mitigate those risks, and then they choose. Well, I don't run a dictatorship. You know, we run a regime here that allows people to operate in a democracy. That's the whole purpose of a member-led organisation. Uh, so but if there's no resolution, the fans just love the game. I love the game. Is it going to be a player fans, Rossi, They love the game too, mate. And that all they're doing is trying to fight for what they they believe is fair and just, not just for today's players, but to, tomorrow as well. You know, so, so I, I don't see again what's so outrageous about our claims. Do you understand our claims, Andrew? What part of our claims do you think are unreasonable? I, I go through your website. I read all of that, yeah. and I must say it's Fantastic. a very well written. It is a very well written piece on on the so website what part of our explaining claims. Don't you claims. Agree with? What, what I don't understand is the whole. Well, I tell you what I don't understand is that we're going eighteen months. That it seemed to me at the start that all that we're now discussing was not put forward at the start, Clint. It seemed to me that you would reach resolution on ten things and then come back to the next meeting and oh well, let's try on these ten. That's how it plays out no, to me. We, and I we, said we, no one no one outside of the meeting, no one can talk because we only hear Clinton inside, we hear the NRL side. But no, the rest of us, the media, the fans, none of us have sat in these meetings, these thousands of hours. We can't get our head around what the hell you're talking about. 
in these meetings. I'm sorry. Let me clarify that. We well, you, can't understand you just that you can take up just, so many just, hours. So many you just hours. contradicted yourself, Andrew. You've just said it was a really well written piece online, and then you say you don't understand. What that, part that's of your side, don't you understand, and the NRL Andrew? have presented their side. So they so that so in those thousands of hours, if you can't meet, so where when does strike become the play? Well, again, what we're saying here is the step before any type of further action is a normal part of the process is to get an industrial relations mediator to the table and work through it. I don't see what's so outrageous about this. It happens in nearly every industry where people fold their arms, sit down and say, we're not negotiating anymore, which is what happened a few weeks ago. And now, yes, it's great. Peter's coming back to the table, but let's come back with an expert that understands these issues because they are employment related issues, industrial relations and very legalistic. Let's step through that and let's get a resolution. That's all. Why is there a pushback from the NRL on bringing in that mediator, Clint? What? I can't understand I, why I this know, is still James. going on. Yeah. I don't, under, I, I don't understand it either, James. Again, if you look around, you know, Australia or, you know, in this country, this is a normal part of the process. Again, I don't see what the resistance is. Why? I, I can't answer that. You know, there's, ultimately, again, there's there's lots of you know there's lots of ways in which they're trying to distract um, the the fans. Uh, but the fans are awake to this. Now, I'm not going to speak on behalf of fans about whether or not our claims are, are fair and just. All we can do is present our side, put it up there for everyone to see, and work through it. Again, I, we can't stop the propaganda machine that exists. But ultimately, it's not going to get the deal done. I'll, well, we if there were a hundred points the still on, if there were a hundred points still to go, and that's been the number that's been bandied about, if there's a hundred points still of issue, mm. is there is there in a ballpark figure that we could move on from if you achieve what thirty or forty yeses? If it was fifty fifty, is there you know? Yeah, so just is to just to explain if you, the hundred, if there are 100 Andrew, points, how many would you want to get? Yeah. Just to explain the hundred, ultimately what existed there was we put forward a settlement proposal. Um, after after four weeks, you know, um, they came back and and ultimately then said, "Here's our here's our proposal." That's where it had a hundred changes in it, and it was an accept or reject. You know, so unfortunately, it was a there was a reject, no negotiation, no discussion on on what they put forward, and it was a take it or leave it offer. That's not negotiating. So again, we've got to work through these issues. That's why we need assistance. The assistance is by way of the industrial relations mediator. It's pretty simple and then work through it. None of okay. our claims are outrageous. And that's why I'm saying to you, James, and to Andrew, what part of our claims are so outrageous? What part of health and safety and employment related matters? Um, access to financial information, RLPA autonomy and the players determining how much goes in you know, their funds and how much we operate on. What part of that is so outrageous? That's, that's for you guys to hammer out behind the doors and you have well, obviously for 18 months. If the NRL is prepared to have yeah. Andrew Abdo to step aside, will you step aside during these negotiations to take the emotions out of the negotiations? Because that's, again, perception of people is that, okay, it's a bit like the live golf thing with Greg Norman in some ways, Clinton. I'm a t totally removed, different set of circumstances behind oh, it's that. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bloody would, bit of different circumstances. Yeah, Andrew, obviously. So, uh, but would you so, do yeah. that? If, if Andrew Abdo, if NRL, they, they make a say, well, okay, we'll take Andrew Abdo out and Clint Newton, would you want to face Peter Volandis or have someone else do that? But again, what, what world does the other side dictate who represents their members? I mean, it's 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 ludicrous. I mean, again, if if Peter wants to sideline his CEO, that's fine. We, I don't care. They can bring Father Christmas to the table if they want. You know, but again, the members will determine who represents them. That's that's like that's the normal part of the process. I just can you think, understand again, that fans read, and it is true, players got a thirty seven percent increase, didn't they? On on the money when we're talking about it. the average wage is now four hundred thousand dollars a player, and Peter Valenti says nine weeks holidays. Can you understand that a lot of fans can't see past that? That you know well, what again, I mean? That's, that's, just, that's a, the it's big a, it's point. Just another, it's bang. another tool, Andrew, to distract the fans away from the real issues. Again, why does the average salary have anything to do with employment rights? It's, mm. it's just, no, 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 it's I, agree a that I agree with argument. that premise. It's a, it's a straw yeah, man argument, premise. Andrew. And you continue but, to push the propaganda. You're parroting no, things no, that no. come across the table from the NRL. No, I, I'm again, saying, I, do you understand? No, I'm, I'm just, I, I want to accept that you live in the real world. Do you understand that a lot of fans yeah. can't see past that? Do you understand that, Clint? Don't don't come back yeah, with me a with lot a, of, a lot the of fans, jargon of the RLPA. Do you understand that? 
a lot of fans can say past that. Again, our job is to represent our members. Fans do look look past this. They're, they're awake to these issues. Again, so rather than just attack the players, attacking the RLPA with, um, with just nonsense and disturbing tactics, just get to the table and work through it. It's not that hard. Clint, can I just ask before we wrap, uh, what percentage of revenue do the players get? Just so we can compare that to other professional sports because MLB, NHL, NBA, they're all at like 50% revenue share. What are yeah. the NRL players at? Yeah, so it's it's a good question. Um, you know, so the players would be receiving 41.5% of the NRL's distributed revenue. So what, how that's different to other uh, um, other industries is the fact that the, the players have chosen not to accept any revenue that is generated from their clubs. Why? Because they want their clubs to be profitable. They want them to be self-sufficient and sustainable into the future. So that's why we've gone to the NRL's revenues, distributable revenue, which is 41.5%. So that's that's what they've got. Okay. And their money is not in dispute. It hasn't been in dispute since December. Yeah. I know all, you're going to get on. You know, I know you're going to fly to Melbourne, um, Clint. So we've taken up a bit too much or out of Melbourne. Sorry. So we better get you uh, back where you have to go. Appreciate your time coming on the program. Um, it just get it done on behalf of the Billy Slays and get in a room, 48 hours, whatever you're going to yeah. do, just get it done. Thanks for coming yeah. on the well, program. What a, what a responsibility you have, Andrew, to continue presenting both sides. We look forward to that. Thanks, James. Um, and, uh, yeah, we look forward to getting back to the table ASAP with an IR mediator and getting it done and everyone just getting on with it. Okay, Clint Newton, I'm just a frustrated fan who stands for the game. You know, like, as I said, I don't want to sit in the thousands of hours. I just want it done. Is that naive? 